All right, today we're going to talk about Sparta. So by the end of today, you'll be able to cite examples and explain the enduring impact of ancient Greece on later civilizations, how geographic factors can promote or impede the movement of people, products, and ideas, and how Greek democracy influences the structure and function of modern democratic governments. So you're going to see a lot of similarities in what we talk about for uh, Sparta. So your vocabulary for this chapter, make sure you update your interactive vocabulary. So we have barracks. The bar barracks is a noun, buildings where soldiers live. Example, the soldiers return to the barracks after a long day of training. Then we have the aristotic, ar aristocratic council. It's a fa phrase, so it's all those two words together. Um, a group of people from the upper class or nobility who helped govern Sparta. Example, the king discussed his idea with the aristocratic council. Landlocked is an adjective. Um, it's cut off from the seacoast surrounded by water, or surrounded by land is what that should say. Um, I will fix that. All right, surrounded by land. An example, Switzerland is landlocked, is a landlocked European country located in the Alps, meaning they don't have any access to a body of water. Like, Ohio is not landlocked because we have the lake, um, but like Iowa would be landlocked. Phalanx is a noun, a group of soldiers who attack in close formation with their shields overlapping and spears pointed forward. Example, a phalanx blocked the enemy's advance, and if you're going to pluralize it, it's going to be phalanxes. That's your variation. The other three we typically don't use in any other form than those. So where are we at today? So we're in the Mediterranean region. That red circle identifies where Sparta is. That's what we're learning about today. So let's look at how Sparta in the red box and Athens up here in the other red box were located. These are the two Greek civilizations that we know the most about. And we know the most about Sparta because of Athens. So if you look, that's they're both kind of they're close, but they're not that close. They're about what a hundred miles apart using our scale. So what are we gonna learn today? So why were Spartan children, especially boys, treated harshly? That's what this is all going to lead to. So let's learn about their military culture. So what we're going to do is I'm going to read this text. You can either read it independently through the PowerPoint or listen to me read it. And then you have a Google form of questions to answer. I will try and highlight some of those answers as we go. All right. So military culture. In the city-state of Sparta, less than 100 miles southwest of Athens, there was a very different idea about the purpose of education. Spartans raised their children to be warriors. They had no interest in developing well-rounded individuals or individuals of any sort. The Spartan educational system emphasized military training almost from the cradle to the grave. For example, the Athenians required two years of military training, but the Spartans required 23. When a Spartan woman gave birth to a baby boy, the child was inspected by a government committee. If the baby was healthy and looked as if he might grow into a strong warrior, he was allowed to live. However, if a baby seemed weak, weak or unhealthy, he was often left outdoors to die. The Spartans made sure ch children grew up to be tough. Spartan children who cried were not picked up or comforted. The Spartans believed that soothing children in this way made them soft. A similar objection was raised against sandals. Wearing shoes meant that boys would, off, would have soft feet. Soldiers needed tough feet. Therefore, Spartan boys had to go barefoot, even in the dead of winter. So we didn't treat our children very well right now. At the beginning of age seven, Spartan boys were sent away from their families to begin military training. They lived in barracks with other boys their age and were taught to obey without question. Even the slightest questioning of authority brought a severe whipping. In Sparta, little time was spent teaching reading, writing, and poetry. 
Instead, physical fitness was king. So we have a picture here. The Spartan warriors, like the one shown here, were the best trained soldiers of their time. The inset image is a bronze statue of a Spartan soldier from 500s BCE. So this is what the Spartan soldiers looked like. Spartan boys were taught to endure great pain and never accept defeat. When the boys became teenagers, their food rations were cut so that they would have to learn to find food for themselves. This included stealing. Young men could marry at 20, age 20, but they had to continue sleeping in the barracks until they turned 30. They had to sneak away to be with their wives, and they would be punished if they got caught. Even after they moved in with their wives, they had to eat with their army unit rather than with their wives and children. Military service continued until the men turned 60. The entire Spartan state was organized as a military unit, and everyone had a role to play. The Spartan women did not fight, but they had more political rights than the Athenian women. They could own land, and they were encouraged to take part in foot races and other sports so they could be healthy mothers. Once they became mothers, they were expected to help raise their sons to be warriors. Spartan mothers had to be prepared to lose their sons in war. On hearing that her son had died in battle, one Spartan woman refused to weep. Instead, she announced her loss proudly. I bore him so that he might die for Sparta, and that is what has happened, as I wished. Why did the Spartans place so much emphasis on military skill and bravery? It was partly to protect themselves against foreign enemies. When someone suggested that Sparta build a wall around the city, the legendary Spartan, Spartan leader Lycurgus supposedly replied that a wall of men would protect the city more effectively than any wall of bricks. But there was another reason, too. The Spartans ruled over large numbers of enslaved people called helots. The first helots were captured in war. Like serfs in feudal Europe centuries later, helots were tied to the land, forced to work on state-owned farms. They were assigned to individual Spartans, but could not be bought and sold by these masters. Whatever they grew or produced on the land, they owed their masters a portion of it. So here you see a statue of a uh, Spartan woman uh, running, and this is from the 500s BCE, Spartan women were encouraged to keep fit. The life of a helot in Sparta, in most cases, was much worse than the life of an enslaved person in Athens. In fact, Spartans made fun of the Athenians for coddling their enslaved workers. So coddling means, like, taking care of. The Spartans said that in Athens you could hardly tell the enslaved workers from the citizens. That was not a problem in Sparta. Although the helots outnumbered Spartan citizens by perhaps 20 to 1, the Spartans had a reputation for treating them harshly. There are many historical accounts that say the helots were beaten regularly and could be put to death for complaining. However, there are some accounts that describe the Spartans as being a little more reasonable at times. They may have even allowed some helots the right to own property and fight alongside Spartans in battle. Despite the harsh rules, or perhaps because of them, the helots sometimes rose in revolt. That was another reason the Spartans forced all male citizens to be warriors. Spartan education was cruel and inhumane by today's standards, but Spartans valued the results that came from these methods. Spartan citizens were patriotic, disciplined, and tough. They valued equality between Spartan citizens. They were taught to care more about these well, the well-being of the state than their own personal well-being, and they were matchless fighters, willing to defend their poly to the death. So this is a painting of uh, the slaves, the helots, and you know, serving their masters. They did those jobs that were undesirable by Spartans. All right, so now you have some questions to answer about this section. What did the Spartans consider to be the purpose of education? Their, what was their whole goal? What qualities did Spartan or yeah, what qualities did Spartans want in their children? What did they look for? How did they treat their children? When Spartan boys began military training, when did Spartan boys begin military training? 
How young were they? It's written in the text. What skills did Spartan boys learn? So what did they teach them? What was expected of Spartan women? What were two reasons that Spartans valued military skills so highly? Who were the helots? And how did the Spartans treat the helots? Generally speaking, make sure you write your answers in complete sentences for this part.